the Middle East built environment has seen a shift in the construction methodologies. And one of these methods, which has been touted as the future of developing large scale buildings is modular construction. In today's episode of the expert interview series, we speak with Riyad Basavis, the Chief Executive Officer at Amana Investments about the company's projects in the region, working with the Red Sea Development Company and the era of offsite manufacturing. Thank you so much for joining us on the show, Riyadh. Thank you, Ranju, for the opportunity. Our pleasure. Without further ado, let's get started with, there has been a constant increase in the preference for prefabrication and modular construction in the region. What has created this need and how would you define that, Riyadh? Um, this is really, uh... It's a progression, a natural progression, uh, uh, driven both by the supply and the demand. Uh, the supply being the, the supply of technology. So uh, 10 years ago, what we're doing would not have been possible. And the technology over the last 10 years, especially computational technology, has enabled what's BIM, Building Information Management, which has enabled 3D uh, uh, drawings, and therefore conflict uh, resolution and clashes, allowing for the ability to design a building fully and eliminate clashes in different disciplines uh, very quickly and do different scenarios computationally on the computer before going to construction. Yeah. So without BIM as a foundation, uh, offsite construction would have been very difficult. So, so, so point one is that the ability, the, the presence of BIM and the ability to do that in the digital environment. Yeah. Uh, point number two is the increased requirement for faster, high speed and, and more accurate ways of construction, yeah. especially for more remote locations. And therefore, manufacturing construction or doing it off-site brings all those advantages of the manufacturing sector yeah. into the construction yeah. sector. Yeah. So this has yeah. been the, the, from the supply side and also from the demand side, these two forces along with others have converged to allow for the right environment to do off-site construction. And this is something that we started, that we dabbled with there back in 2009. So we've been in this sector before it got uh, sexy in a way, 11 years ago. And of course, with uh, Corona and COVID-19, uh, in 2020 and the requirements for social distancing, uh, the advantage of offsite construction has just ex gone exponential. Yeah, you just mentioned about how, uh, you know, with modular construction or offsite manufacturing, that we could obviously overcome the challenges uh, during the time of COVID-19. But could you touch upon what are some of these construction challenges that uh, companies, you know, developers can overcome by adapting to offset manufacturing? Absolutely. So there are many advantages. So one of them in the, uh, in the presence of Corona or epidemics is social distancing. So you don't have as many people at site. Instead, you have them in a controlled environment in a factory and therefore social distancing is more possible. And it's more possible to control the, to ensure that the, that the people coming in and out of the facility are healthy and whoever should not be in the facility is not in the facility. So it's easier control from that point of view, that's one. Uh, two, another advantage is the output. The quality is a manufacturing quality. So the quality of the finishing comes out in a more, more of a manufacturing quality than, than bespoke on-site construction. And therefore the ability to provide high quality in large volumes uh, in, for remote location especially is, is, uh, becomes possible. That's yeah. two. Third, from a wastage point of view, uh, we, have, we incur 30% less wastage than traditional construction because the building is uh, fully designed before we go to manufacturing. And when we go to manufacturing, we're using scale manufacturing, economies of scale, and therefore the wastage is minimized and the use of material is optimized. Yeah. A fourth advantage is safety. Everyone is working on ground level. So even if we're building a ground plus four, a ground plus six facility, everything is done on ground level. And then those boxes or modules are installed at site on top of each other. And therefore, it's a much higher safety. So these are the obvious advantages of, of, uh, of off-site construction. When you come to fully off-site, so what we do in Dubox, for example, the, the, another advantage comes to, it, comes to mind, and that's a, a game changer, is the ability to scale up and scale down whenever you want. That's very well summed up. How does modular construction promote both innovation and sustainability? So I'll talk about sustainability and also social impact because yeah. they, they, they are two things that, that, that really are, are somehow overlooked in, in, in the sector. So I'll start with the social impact. By shifting the construction to a factory, you're really able to uh, improve the employment, the employability and the skill set of the people working in the factory because now it's a factory environment and it's not a construction site. And this factory can be close to a city yeah. so that the people 
and that are being employed don't have to move away from their homes far enough. And you can attract talent that would not necessarily work on a construction site. So we're finding that, for example, uh, an advantage in Saudi Arabia. It's easier to attract local Saudi talents to work with you in a, in a factory environment than it is to be in a harsh, remote location uh, uh, in the desert or, or, or what have you. So that's from a social impact point of view. From the environmental point of view, uh, there are two, two factors to it. One, there's less wastage, and we see it in our operation, in our factory, and we measure the wastage because that's part of the cost of the building. So we are a traditional contractor, but we are also uh, on Dubox and Dupods, who are, which are wholly owned subsidiaries by Amana. So we're able to compare the two uh, delivery mechanisms. Yeah. And the offset construction delivery mechanism, the modular method, is by far more environmentally friendly because there's 30% less wastage than the traditional uh, method. Because again, you're building to volume and you're optimizing. So if you're taking ceramic, for example, you're optimizing how you cut them. Or, or wood or what have you, so that you, because it's a factory, and you're and you're and you're making you're optimizing the amount that you use and minimizing the wastage. So you spoke about localization and how you know you are enforcing that in Saudi Arabia. How is the company ensuring localization across its workforce in all of the countries that you have presence in? So by 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 virtue of having a factory in the local environment, mm -hmm. then by virtue you are you are employing local local talent. And that factory, the pro because the product is a self-standing product and it's, it's, uh, and, and, and it's, uh, it's a structural element so it can take close, self-standing, that means you can ship it anywhere. Mm -hmm. So that means you're employing the local talent and, and that product can be shipped anywhere across, uh, across the region. So yeah. in, our, in our factory, in our, in, our, in our first factory, which is in the UAE, uh, from here we shipped uh, modules and, and, and constructed buildings in Saudi Arabia for Al Maral back about five years ago. Okay. Now we've set up a second factory in Saudi, in Rabir, uh, to cater for the Saudi Saudi market, with a potential to start a third factory, which will also be in Saudi, okay. uh, and also employing the lo local local talent. Talking about Saudi Arabia, I know Amana Dubox has been supporting the Red Sea Development Company, uh, you know, by providing accommodation for up to ten thousand workers on the site of the Red Sea project. Could you talk to us about what does the collaboration mean for the company, and what are some of the techniques that are being used for this project? Absolutely. So collaboration really started or starts and must start in day one, especially in an off-site uh, uh, construction uh, environment. And the reason it's important, and I'll tell you how the collaboration happens, but first let me explain why it's more important in, in an off-site modular environment versus traditional construction. Mm -hmm. The reason it's important because we cannot go to manufacturing unless the design is fully completed. Yeah. So fully completed means I know, for example, the color of the walls. I know the material of the ceramics uh, on, 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 for the bathrooms. In traditional construction, these decisions are done later in the process. Yeah. And therefore, the end user or the client doesn't need to decide on the color of the, of the walls at, you know, from day one. Mm -hmm. They can decide three, four months down the road yeah. while, the, while the structural elements are being designed and installed at site and so on. In offsite construction, that's not possible. We need to be 100% full, uh, in full agreement on the design and all the specs and then go to production. Uh, and therefore, it means a high level of collaboration. And that's where VIM comes in. So, so and, and, and the Red Sea Development Company is an ideal example to showcase because uh, we were, were awarded, we've been awarded two projects that are ongoing right now for them. One is a staff accommodation, the other one's a hotel. And from day one, the collaboration was at the highest level with workshops and so on to ensure that we have the digital models done as early as possible. So within the BIM environment, we have the same model that, that they as the client are using and we as the contractor and designer are using to interact together. Yeah. And therefore, it's not, the, it's not that we are sending blueprints back and forth and so on. It's a live model that's being, and therefore the collaboration is higher and therefore the design period is shorter and you're able to go to production much, much faster. Uh, moving ahead, we know that Awana has been supporting innovation and value engineering across uh, your projects. But how does that board with creating an off-site construction platform? The use of BIM is foundational. So, so step one, innovations in BIM and the BIM models and the libraries that we are creating are foundational for the modular construction. And then on top of that, we've been doing different things. So right now we've got IoT in the process so that we're able to measure the productivity of the people moving around the factory, the equipment, the modules themselves as they move so that we can track them like any other factory. And so that we can have those productivity measures and, and, and the ability to then improve productivity and improve uh, uh, and become more efficient and so on with, with, with lean manufacturing. So we've installed, we've, uh, we're enabling IoT in the factory itself. In addition to that, we're seeing a high level of interest from our clients 
especially clients that are in the accommodation sector and the hotel sector, hospitality, uh, where we're enabling, in, in DuPod, we're enabling the, the bathrooms are being shipped with smart meters. So they're able, imagine you're a hotel operator and you're able to see on the cloud, and we have the platform all built out on the cloud, to able to see by room, each room, how much water has been used, how much electricity, and how much sewage has been used. So imagine the, the data that you get as a, as a hotel operator when you do that because of the smart metering that we're installing uh, as part of that, that, that bathroom that's being shipped to the, uh, to the hotel uh, operator. Moving ahead, um, I wanted to understand what is Amana looking forward for in 2021? You mentioned earlier that you are going in a stepped manner, you know, with your expansion. But what is the expansion strategy for the coming year across the region? Well, we have to be cognizant when we talk about expansion, we have to be cognizant of the overall market. Yeah? And the overall market in the region is, uh, is, is bound by three factors. So, so one of them is the price of oil. The second macro factor also is the impact of Corona and COVID-19 on the environment and on the economy at large yeah, uh, uh, around us. And the third factor is the geopolitical situation of the region. You know, the Middle East has always been a turbulent uh, geopolitically and therefore funding is not consistent. It's, it's, uh, it, go, it comes and goes. So with those three, uh, our view into 2021, 2022 is a, is a conservative view. So we're looking, we're not looking to have a growth of revenue. Uh, we're looking to maintain revenue, perhaps even manage the revenue, uh, manage downward the revenue. So make sure that, uh, that we don't exceed a certain threshold, but, but work really more of, of working with clients and going deeper with those same clients. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be all about working with credit worthy clients okay. because liquidity for the sector, uh, whether for the construction sector or for the banking sector that is funding the construction sector uh, will be tight. Uh, we expect it to be tight in 2021, 2022 for various reasons. Various players in the sector have had their issues, whether in, in the UAE or in Saudi or other country, countries, and, and have therefore impacted the balance sheets of some of the banks in, in a major way. And therefore, many banks are cautious about uh, funding the construction sector. Having said that, we have no issues ourselves whatsoever. Uh, but we just want to be sure that uh, we are not growing while you, know, while you are not loading your boat while there is low tide. When there's low tide, you want to make sure you have a light boat yeah. so that you're able to sail through. On to my last question, Riyad. What, according to you, will the construction sector look like in 10 years from now? And how is Amana going to prepare for that? 10 years from now, I see more digitization. Uh, more so than in the last 10 years. So I believe the, the construction sector, we're beginning to see it ourselves, is at the cusp of adopting digital technologies more than it did in the past. And it's about time. Yeah. You know, by a study of the World Economic Forum the, uh, three or four years ago, and, and McKinsey study as well, we we're one of the bottom two or three sectors in adopting technology. But that's changing. That's beginning to change. And that's an area that we are super focused on as, as a company. Mm -hmm. The digitization, whether it's digitization of the process, mm -hmm. whether it's the site, yeah. uh, whether it's the adoption of data collection and therefore big data and analytics and AI on top of that, or whether it's VR, AR, whether it's drones, uh, uh, blockchain down the road. But, but the, the, uh, the, the open-mindedness to adopt technology, digital technology, so that we become more efficient and we're able to scale at, let, at less cost. So I see that one as a major uh, um, change in 10 years, in the next, in these 10 years. Another major change I see is the involvement of the construction sector in more PPP projects yeah. or contractor finance projects. Mm -hmm. uh, just as the nature of any mature, mature economy. And as the Gulf of economy matures, then, then the opportunities become for being uh, 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 for, for, for triple P uh, projects versus government led or government paid for a project. So I see that as well. Mm -hmm. And then on a third element, I see more, I would say, rationalization of uh, the sector. Mm -hmm. and, I feel, and it's way overdue. The sector, while, while the sector has had its boom and bust in the past, it's been painful for companies, the boom and bust, both for clients that have hired contractors and failed in their middle of their project, or for contractors that have failed because of collection issues with clients. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I feel the need will be in the region to have a rationalization of the sector and a, categor a proper categorization of the capabilities of companies so that, you are, uh, so that good clients can match up with good contractors. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and have that treadmill continue getting faster and faster so that that improves the whole sector uh, continuously. And then the, the, the weak would fail and the strong would, would, uh, would, would get better. And then the newcomers hopefully will also get on the treadmill 
and also uh, improve with time. So, so I see a need for uh, uh, rationalizing and, and, and segregating, I would say, the strong, and strong doesn't have to be big, by the way. Strong means sustainable, that they're able to take a shock, they have good risk management in the company, they have good balance sheets as a, as a company, a good management team, that's what in my definition strong is. Uh, so that uh, uh, so that the sector itself is strong and is able to to really uh, put forward national champions that can stand sustainably, you know, above others and national champions that can really grow beyond the region and make the region proud in their growth beyond the region. So I think uh, work has to be done around around that to sift the the men from the boys. I would say that's very well summed up, Riyad. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. It was fantastic having you. Thank you, Andrew, for the opportunity. My pleasure. Have a good day. To all our viewers who've been tuned in, don't forget to hit the like button and share the video with your friends and colleagues. We will come back soon with another interesting episode in the expert interview series. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.